We shouldn't be looking to buy elections to forecast the outcome of a general election, but we can look at historical precedent. And unfortunately for the Conservatives, the historical precedent, uh, pre precedents are not very kind to them. Well, first of all, this Richard Ford was just mentioning the Liberal Democrats have now gained four seats from the Conservatives um, in this parliament in, in three cases, including Summit and Froome last night, at near record-breaking swings. The last time the Liberal Democrats won four seats off the Conservatives in a parliament was the parliament of 1992 to 1997, which uh, ended in defeat for the Conservatives. Meanwhile, the swing in Selby and Anstey um, at around 24% is the second highest swing ever from Conservative to Labour. Um, the one better one than this was in the 92 to 97 Parliament, and there are a couple of others that Labour achieved in that Parliament, again, on a similar scale. And Labour have not done anything like that in a by-election since. So again, the precedents, the 1992, 97 Parliament that ended in Conservative defeat. Now, no guarantee that history is going to repeat itself, but it is a further indication of the scale of the task that faces Rishi Sunak if he's going to get his party back into a position where it might have a chance of winning uh, the next general election. So, John, when we analyse by-election results and any result, we like to look at things that might be surprising or people might have not anticipated. Is there anything no. from the election results yesterday, from yesterday's um, election, that was a little bit surprising? <laughs> Oh, sure. The uh, fact that the Conservatives managed to hang on to the seat in Uxbridge was not widely anticipated, although it was thought uh, for a variety of reasons that the swing from Conservative to Labour might be less there uh, than in Selby, though in the end, the swing in Selby was probably well beyond most people's um, uh, expectations. And that, of course, then leads to an interesting debate about why it happened. Well, if we ex take the word of the uh, successful cons new Conservative MP. The explanation lies in the Conservatives' ability to focus on the proposed extension by Sadiq Khan, the Labour London Mayor, uh, of the uh, uh, low admission vehicle uh, a scheme uh, to the outer London boroughs, um, and that the Conservatives were campaigning against this on the grounds that people who uh, suddenly discover that they have vehicles that would incur a charge, uh, that this was unfair on them. Um, he certainly didn't think there was anything to do with the voters of Uxbridge um, thinking that perhaps Mr Sunak was beginning to turn things around. Now, he might be right, he might be wrong, but certainly it does look like a somewhat exceptional result. Now, that said, clearly there is a question for Labour as to why, if in, even if indeed... Um, the explanation lies primarily in the debate about the ULA zone, is why was Labour's campaign upended by the Conservative focus on that issue? If Labour's command over voters, according to the opinion polls, is indeed a solid command, you might expect the party to be able to cope and deal with that and still manage to win uh, the by-election. And mm. I think as a result, that debate which is bubbling on inside the Labour Party, and we saw some of it emerge with the argument about whether it should or should not uh, end the two-child limit on the provision of welfare benefits, um, that, that I think the debate about whether or not the safety first policy that uh, Sakir seems to be keen on, whether the problem with that is that while voters might readily come to Labour, perhaps there's also a risk they might readily go as well. Is that potentially the difference between the 1990s and today? In the 1990s, the Conservative Party became more and more unpopular, but it wasn't just that. Tony Blair was a, was a very popular national figure, some, somewhat surprising perhaps for people today. But he was uh, sort of a, there, there was this sort of hero worship around him and his personality, which we're really not seeing with Sir Keir Starmer. Does that mean that Labour's lead is a lot softer than many people would assume? Well, it's certainly the case that Sakir is not anything like as popular as Tony Blair was before 1997. And, you know, other things being equal, that means it's somewhat less likely that Labour are going to get their message across because people are less likely to listen. Indeed, you know, one of the characters that people mention when they're asked about what they think about Sakir Starmer is they do t tend to find him rather boring 
and insipid. So again, not necessarily the best vehicle for getting uh, your uh, your message across. But the other trick that uh, Tony Blair managed to pull off is that although indeed New Labour were also chasing the centre, they did manage to create a sense of excitement that indeed, to use the phrase they had, things can only get better. And by implication, they said that things will get better. Yeah. I think the challenge that Labour face, and it's not simply of their own making, because the fiscal situation now is so much more difficult than it was before the 1997 general election, Labour is having to work out how, as an opposition, it can persuade voters that it might be able to do things better, while at the same time being cognizant of the fact that there isn't much money to spend um, and that therefore it's going, a, a new government is going to be heavily constrained about what it can do. So uh, that's undoubtedly yeah. a dilemma for Labour. So, uh, But in the meantime, chasing the centre and not saying too much, well, some of Sakir Starmick's critics will say that isn't necessarily yes. the way to cement the loyalty of voters.